hello, it's almost Valentine's Day and around here that means it's time to take a look at your roses and do a hard prune, what we call a hard prune, which gets them moving out of dormancy after the winter time and uh, gets them off to a good start. But the first thing you really want to do is start with a good sharp pruning. Um, and here we have the, our pruners. Now they look kind of old, but all I'm doing is sharpening it and I'm only sharpening on the beveled side of the blade. Nothing over here, nothing here, just simply that beveled side of the blade. Otherwise, you'll impact the cut. This should give us a nice clean cut. It's a David Austin rose it's called Lady of Shallot, or we prefer Shallot, but anyway. Um, first thing you're gonna wanna do is get rid of anything that's dead, diseased, or dying. Um, here we have right here, something that has sustained some, some death. So we'll get rid of that. I'm gonna use my loppers back here to get rid of this dead cane way down here at the base. Get rid of that. Um, and then you wanna take a look at um, anything that might be crossing. Anytime you've got uh, these canes crossing each other, it gives an opportunity for the invasion of disease. So here, you'll see this guy is crossing with this guy. If I don't hang myself up here, I'm going to get rid of that guy. You'll notice I'm wearing very long gloves. They're called gauntlet gloves. They're perfect for shut, uh, taking care of roses. Once we get all of the crossing, dead and dying things taken care of, then we come back and we remove anything that's smaller than a, the diameter pencil because it's not going to be able to produce any sizable kind of rose for you. And we'll keep doing this for quite a while. I'm going to get rid of this top part of this too because it's dead. So as you work on it, you'll come back and do some, you'll see some things that are impacted. We go. See, it's still dead right there, so I'm going to come down even further and hope to get something cut. I also want to make sure that the center of the shrub stays open as much as possible. That's for air circulation that will cut down on um, any possible diseases and things. So this guy is actually sort of growing towards the inside, and I'm going to take him off now. opening up more and I'm eventually going to get to the point where we have three to five main canes left and I'm thinking uh, this one is one this one I think is curving back so much I think I might get him out of there because he's going to compete with this guy down the road so. This is an older cane right here. And I think we'll, it's time to go ahead and, and uh, let him go. Uh, we have some newer ones coming on that are gonna do a fine job of providing canes for us. Now, we're down to one, two, three, four, five. And that's about the maximum number that you wanna have as far as your remainder of canes when you do a hard, hard prune like this. You notice it's an open center. You want to have it wind up being like an open uh, vase or an empty ice cream cone. That's what you're going for. Now, I'm going to continue cleaning this up a little bit. And um, ultimately, I will be coming back to cut off from uh, outward facing buds. Here's an outward facing bud. And when we cut this here, it will promote growth this way, away from the center of the bush. And that's how we keep the, the shrubs healthy. I'm going to cut this guy off all the way. Get rid of this guy and this little guy. And then we'll come back to him. Well, 
18 to 24 inches is generally where you want to be. And um, I'm going to take this one out because here's an outward facing bud. And I'll cut off here. And see with the sharp, sharp pruners, we get a good clean cut like that. Here we have one. And I can cut him right above this one. And that will give us another clean cut. We're making these shrubs look really ugly at this point, but in the long run, it's what they love, it's how they grow, and that's how they replenish themselves. And so here we have the final product. It's pretty ugly, but that's what we're doing to make it be pretty soon in the first uh, flush of flowers in the springtime, but before that we'll have gorgeous dark green foliage covering this whole plant. And um, that's what you have to do. You have to make them ugly before they can be pretty. Now, this is a knockout rose. Many people have them in their yards. Uh, they think of them as low maintenance, and they are to a certain extent. They are definitely disease resistant. But the, you really do need to prune these heavily, just like you prune other roses. In fact, probably more so. Uh, after every flush of uh, flowers, you probably could come out here and just hit it again. And with you, you don't have to be as careful about hitting outside um, buds, outward facing buds, as you do on regular roses. They are going to grow in and amongst themselves. So some people have been known to just take their shears and just cut straight across at a very low spot. And it's been um, very rewarding to do that. It's quick <laughs> and uh, it, it, it helps the rose recover. So. The, um, the knockouts are, are very similar to the other rows. It's just they can take a little bit more of a beating. As I mentioned, this is a shrub rose, a David Austin rose. It's been pruned, so exactly how you would prune a regular hybrid tea or floribunda or grandiflor. Essentially, you're trying to get the center of the rose open and uh, make it shaped like an upside down vase or open ice cream cone. Cutting on the outside edges for um, outward facing buds. And um, we have now completed our roses, uh, the pruning, the hard pruning for our garden here in the Botanical Garden in Brunswick County. We've just completed it. If you'd like to come by and see what we've done and what you can make your roses look like, please come visit us. We'd love to have you.